Welcome to the second part of the grid tutorial in Unreal Engine. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to build a hexagonal grid system. If you didn't watch the previous video, please go and watch that first and learn how to make the basic grid system. The hexagonal grid itself divides into two subsections. The first type is point top mesh, where there's a single vertex at the top of the mesh. And the second type is a flat top mesh, where there are two vertices at the top of the mesh and they make an edge. For the first step, let's create the hexagon meshes that we need. I will use the Blender, but you can use any other 3D software that you like. Open the Blender software. Use left shift plus A shortcut to bring up the add menu. From the mesh menu, select the cylinder, open the add cylinder menu, and set the vertices to six. Also, I will set its depth to just five centimeters. If you rotate the camera and take a closer look at the mesh, we will build our grid in the Unreal Engine along the x-axis so we can consider this mesh as the point top version of the hexagon. Now, let's export this mesh. The standard format to export to the Unreal Engine is the FBX format. I made a preset for myself with the best settings that you need to export meshes from the Blender to the Unreal Engine. You can pause the video and use the same settings. I will call this mesh hexagon underscore P underscore top as a point top hexagon. To create the other type of hexagon, all we need to do is just rotate this hexagon 90 degrees around the z-axis. Now we made the flat top hexagon along the x-axis. Let's finish our job with meshes by exporting this mesh too. Back to the Unreal Engine and create a new folder for the meshes we made. Drag and drop both files into the content browser to import them. For now, I don't want to create a collision for them. Open the Advanced section. I suggest you always enable Combines Meshes. It will combine meshes if your mesh is built up from multiple geometries. But in this case, it does not matter. Also, I don't want to create any material for them or import any textures. Finally, click on the Import All button to add both hexagons to the Unreal Engine. As you can see, both meshes are added to the engine. This step might not be necessary for you if you want to create only one type of grid for your project and you don't need to switch between different types of grids. But for the sake of this tutorial, I want the ability to switch between different types of the grids. So I need to create a new variable type to show a different type of the grids. So right click and from the blueprint menu, select the enumeration and I will call it E grid type. Now let's add new enumerators as types to our new variable type. First, the default type is the square, and then we can add point and flat top hexagons. We need to create a new variable inside our generator to store type. As you guessed, the variable type is the same as the E grid type we made. And I want to directly change this in the level, so we need the instance editable. There are multiple ways to tackle this task. You can create new tile class types for each different type of meshes we have, or you can be lazy but smart and use the same default tile we made in the previous video and change it a little bit and keep things organized and modular. So let's be lazy. Open the tile class, find the initialize function, and add an input to that. So we can tell the type we want to tile class directly from the generator class. And I guess we don't need to store this variable. Now, before I forget to set that, let's go back to the generator and open its initialize tiles function. Find the initialize function of the tile and set the type. Back to the tile class, let's create a function to set the mesh. We need an input type for this function too. Again, if you don't want to switch between types, you don't need to do this. Just set the mesh manually. But to set mesh, programmatically drag the tile component to the graph. Drag a connection and search for the set static mesh. Drag another connection from the new mesh and search for select and now connect the type to the index. And you will eventually see the grid types we made earlier. Now just select the corresponding mesh for each grid type.
back to the initialize function and call this function just before the attach function. And don't forget to connect the type nodes. We are just one step behind in completing the task, and that's finding the tiles locations. We already know the calculation for the square grid, but for the hexagonal grids, calculation is different for each of them. I will use the same formula that I used in my procedural level generator plugin. Let's start with the point top hexagon. Imagine all the hexagons have the same width to calculate the distance in the x axis. We need two almost similar formulas if the row address is zero, or even we use this formula. Otherwise, if the row is odd, we will use this formula for the distance in the x-axis, the distance in y-axis. Imagine all the hexagons have the same length, then we can use this formula. Next, we can check the formulas for the flat top. Imagine all the hexagons have the same width. This time we have a single formula for the distance in the x-axis. But for the y-axis, imagine all the hexagons have the same length. Now to find the distance in the y-axis, we need two formulas. If the column number is zero or even, we can use this formula. Otherwise, if the column number is odd, we have to use this formula. Before implementing these formulas, let me introduce my procedural level generator plugin. If you are not familiar with that yet, that is a plugin that you can use to speed up your level design progress. All you need to do is set up the sockets. Think of them as plugs and the rules for each piece. Once that's done, the level generator takes over, crafting endless levels for your game. It's like having a magic wand for level design. It works with both 2D and 3D levels, so your imagination is the limit. If you want to build levels while your game is running, or if you want to make your game multiplayer, this level generator is ready for action anytime, anywhere. One other cool feature is you can generate endless city grids with only two clicks and build up your city on top of that. Curious about all the cool things this generator can do? There's a whole playlist of videos waiting for you. Dive in and see how it can transform the way you create. Please find the links in the description. Back to implementation. We already have the formula for the square grid. Let's collapse this into a function to keep things organized. I will call the new function calculate location. I will rename the output node. And we need a new input node to tell the function what type of grid this tile is made for. And, instead of wiring to the beginning of the function, I can directly call the grid type of the initialize function. Now, open the new function. Let's create a select node for the output, so we can separate each formula here. We already have the formula for square, so let's connect that. This mesh extent is common for all three grid types. Let's separate the square section with a comment box. The shortcut for that is C on your keyboard. First, I will implement the point top hexagon. I need another boolean select node to separate the formula for the x. Remember, we had two formulas for the even or odd column number. If row modulo by 2 is 0, then row is even or 0. Keep in mind that the extent function only returns half of the width or length of the mesh, but we need the actual width or length of the mesh, so we have to multiply the extent values by 2. We can create another multiply node, or just add a pin to the previous node. Now multiply by the column number. And if the column is odd, we need to add half of the mesh width to the formula we made. Let me make this more cleaner. Now, for the y-axis, we just have one formula. The length or the y-value is multiplied by 2. Then, multiplied by the row, and finally multiply them by 3, divided by 4. The offset value for the y-axis is ready. We can add a comment box to the point top formula. This must be connected to y. 
And finally, for the flat top hexagon. We just have one formula for the x axis. To find the width, multiply the x value by 2, then multiply by the column, and finally multiply by the 3 divided by 4. The x value of the offset is ready, but for the y axis we have two formulas and it depends on the column number. Let's check if the column number is even or odd. First, to find the length, multiply the y value by 2, then multiply this with the row. We can create a new multiply node or add another pin to the previous node. The formula for the even or zero columns is done. Now, for the second part, all we need to do is just add the first value to half of the length. Let me clean this first part. Instead of rewiring, I can double click on the wire to create a reroute node and use it as a hub. The location function is completed. Let's check if everything is connected. It seems I forgot to connect this node. Now, we can test hexagon grids. I found destroying actors in the blueprint is a little bit different from the C++. And the clear tiles function we made in the previous video is not working properly. So for now, let's just delete the tiles manually. As you can see, all hexagon tiles are at their correct location. Let's delete them and check the flat top grid. Same as before, all the tiles are in place. Thank you for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos.